Installing Active Directory. As we learnt in our introduction to Active Directory video, in order to create a domain, we'll need to install the Active Directory domain services role on a server for that server to become a domain controller for our new domain. So what is a domain anyway? Most of you listening to this video have probably heard about and have worked with domains before, but for those of you that are new to the concept of domains, this is a domain. Yes, I know, it's just a triangle, but that's how domains are represented when we see domains being referenced in documentation, in network diagrams, books, and of course, videos like this one. Now, creating a domain is a pretty easy process, and you'll see that when we create our first domain controller in a moment. You see, when we create a domain controller, we'll need to tell it which domain it will be controlling, and we'll be either creating that domain from scratch if it doesn't exist already, or we'll be adding our new domain controller to an existing domain. And it's this domain controller that's responsible for controlling and storing user passwords and permissions, as well as providing a location where we can search for other objects inside of our domain. So when a user needs to log onto the network, they'll authenticate with a domain controller, which is just a fancy way of saying they'll enter in their username and password. And if that person does have a valid user account, not only will they be granted access to log onto the domain, but they'll also be granted authorization to access certain objects within the domain, such as files and folders and printers and things of that nature, as long as they have permissions to do so. Now, our domain controller can also be responsible for other tasks within our domain, and you're going to learn more about specific roles that it has over the course of these videos. But before we start creating our first domain controller, just to give you guys a heads up as to the lab that we'll be working with here, we're going to start fresh. We're going to create a new Windows Server 2008 network. We'll install Active Directory into a new domain called winstructorlab.com on a server called DC01. And later on in these videos, we're going to see how we can create child domains, additional domain controllers. We're going to work with Forest, the FISMO roles, sites, and many other things. One of the first things you'll need to do before we start is to configure your server with a static IP address. Since so many other servers in your domain will rely on Active Directory, we're going to need a static IP address so all of our other devices know exactly where to find it. So we'll need to fire up the server manager by clicking the icon here down in the quick launch area. And then over here on the right, we'll choose to view our network connections. And then I'm going to right click on my network card here and choose properties. Now we'll double click on Internet Protocol version 4, IPv4. And just make sure that you have set your IP properties here to use static values. Now it's also worth pointing out for those of you that are new to Active Directory that it relies heavily on DNS for name resolution. So you might notice down here that we've set the DNS server address to the same IP address that we've set for this server. Now the reason for this is that this server is also going to be configured with DNS when we install Active Directory. So in effect, we're telling our soon to become Active Directory domain controller here that when it needs to resolve an address using DNS, then the server that it will use will be itself. Okay, well let's close all of these windows here for now. And let's go and create our first domain. So to install Active Directory, we'll come over here to the left hand side of the server manager and we'll click on roles. And in the right hand side, we'll choose add roles. And this is going to start up the add role wizard. So we'll click next. And from the list of available roles here, we're going to choose the second option, Active Directory Domain Services, and then we'll click next. And we'll get a little summary page here telling us what Active Directory Domain Services is for. And also take note here that if you are new to Windows Server operating systems, it's going to also prompt you to install a DNS server if you don't already have one on your network. Now we also have a couple of hyperlinks here in the event that you need further help, but that's probably why you're listening to this video anyway, so let's ignore that. We'll click Next. And we'll get another message telling us that we might need to restart our server after the installation of Active Directory is complete. And we're also going to have to run the DC promo tool after this wizard completes in order to finalize the installation 
of Active Directory. So we'll click Install. Now this is going to take a little while, so we'll pause the video here and we'll return once it's complete. Okay, the installation has finished and we're reminded once again that we will need to run the DC Promo tool to complete our installation of Active Directory. So we'll click Close. And then we'll go and click on Start. And we'll type in DC Promo. And we'll hit Enter. And this is going to fire up the second half, if you like, of the Active Directory Domain Services Wizard. And you can see here that we do have the option of using an advanced mode for installation, but we won't worry about that for now. We're just going to click Next. And we're given a warning here that since Windows Server 2008 introduces some new security settings, that we might have some problems with older versions of Windows or experience some issues with the Active Directory migration tools or Windows deployment services. But if you want some more information about this, you can visit this URL here. So we'll ignore this, we'll continue, we'll click Next. And here we have two options. Do we want to create a domain controller for a forest that already exists? Or will this be a new domain controller in a new forest? Now in our case, since this is a brand new server installation and it's also our first server, we're starting from scratch here. So we'll choose the second option to install a new domain controller in a new forest. However, if you already have an existing domain structure, which is probably more than likely, and this new domain controller will be added to your existing domain structure, then you'll want to choose the first option, and we're going to look at that option later on in another video. So we'll select to create a new domain in a new forest, and we'll click Next. All right, so what is the fully qualified domain name of the root domain going to be called? Now, if you're currently setting up Windows Server 2008 in a corporate environment, you no doubt already have a domain name purchased, so you probably know what you're going to have to enter in here. But for those of you that might be learning about this for the first time and you're unsure what you should be putting in here, it all depends on whether or not you're going to need to have this domain accessible from the internet. So let's say for argument's sake that this is just a lab box for you to play with at home or in the corporate lab at work, you could enter in practically anything you want. So if your name happens to be Bob, you could enter in Bob followed by a domain extension. Now, ordinarily, you'd probably be expecting to see a .com address or something like that or another extension from a country that you might live in. But if this domain isn't for production use, using the local extension is the recommended choice. So you could call it bob.local or jack.local, america.local, london.local, basically whatever you want. Just remember that using anything other than a registered domain extension will mean that your name won't be accessible from the internet. Now, if on the other hand, this is going to be a production domain, or you do want to be able to access other devices in your domain from outside this network, such as from the internet, maybe you want to set up a mail server or a web server from home. In that case, you'll want to register a domain name. So let's go and open up a web browser. We'll click on Start and we'll launch Internet Explorer. And we'll go to a domain registrar. So let's use GoDaddy as our choice here, but there are hundreds of them available. So from here, we can type in a domain name and then choose which domain extension that we want to register. And then once you configure the name servers here in GoDaddy's member section, it can then point to your own network. And as you can see from this drop down extension box, there's a lot of domain extensions to choose from. So if the name of the domain that you'd like to register is already taken, you'll probably find that it's available using another extension. All right, well, let's close this and we'll go back here to our wizard and we'll remove bob.local and I'm going to call my domain winstructorlab.com. And since this is our first domain we're creating in this network, it will become the forest root domain and from here, we'll be able to create child domains later on using names such as us.winstructorlab.com or asia.winstructorlab.com and so on. So we'll double check our spelling and we'll click next. And the wizard's going to go off 
and make sure that we're not already using that name somewhere else in our network since we can't create two domains with the same name. Okay, well the next step here is to specify what forest functional level we'll want our forest to be. Now, I'm going to set mine here to Windows Server 2003 and I'm not going to go into any detail about why since that's going to be the topic of its own video entirely. So we'll click Next. But do bear in mind that whatever setting you choose here will require you to have domain controllers that are at least that operating system. So if I set mine here to Windows Server 2003, every domain controller in our forest will need to be Windows 2003 or better. If I happen to set this to Windows 2008, then all of our domain controllers inside our forest will need to be Windows 2008. And then older operating systems, including Windows 2003, won't be able to assume a domain controller role inside our forest. So I'm going to go with Windows Server 2003 and we'll click Next. Next, we'll need to set the domain functional level. And this is exactly the same type of screen that we saw before. Here we'll need to specify either Windows 2003 or Windows 2008. Now also notice that Windows 2000 isn't listed here and that's because back in the previous screen we said we wanted to have a Windows Server 2003 forest functional level and that meant we couldn't have any domain controller that was less than Windows Server 2003. So there are our two options. We can set the domain functional level to 2003 or 2008 and I'm going to go with 2003 right now. And again, we're going to talk more about this in another video, so we'll click Next. Now, since this is our first domain controller in a new forest, we'll need to install DNS as well, and that's already been checked for installation, so we're going to leave that as it is. We're also told down here that since this is our first domain controller in a forest, it must be a global catalog server, and it can't be a read-only domain controller. Now, read-only domain controllers are a new feature in Windows Server 2008 and we're going to discuss all of these features in detail in other videos. So there's nothing to do here. Everything we need's already been selected. We're going to install DNS on this server and we'll click Next. Now we've just been given a warning message here telling us that a delegation for this DNS server can't be created because the authoritative parent zone can't be found or it's not running on a Windows DNS server. Now this is fine since this is our first server, this is to be expected, so we're going to ignore this message and we'll click Yes. Okay, now since we already know from the previous video that Active Directory is really only a database server, we'll need to specify where we want to install the database folder, the log files folder, and the sysfol folder. And for best performance, it's recommended that these things are stored on a separate fault tolerant volume, particularly the database and the log files. But since this is a lab, we're okay to install them in these default locations. And by the way, if you weren't already aware, this sysfol folder here is where Active Directory will store files that it needs to replicate to other domain controllers. All right, well, we'll leave the defaults as they are. We'll click Next. And now we'll need to set an administrator password, which we'll use to restore our system if we get into trouble. It's this password that we'll need to remember if we need to boot into directory services restore mode. And as it says here up the top, this password is separate from your regular domain administrator account. Although you can set the password to be the same if you like, although it is recommended that you use a different strong password for additional security. So we'll enter in a password here and we'll need to type it in again just to confirm it and then we'll click Next. Okay, well we have our summary here of what we're about to do, which is to create a new domain called winstructorlab.com in a new forest called winstructorlab.com. We'll be running at a Windows Server 2003 forest functional level and the domain functional level will be the same. And if we scroll down a little bit here, you can see the chosen locations for our database log and sysfol folders. We'll also be installing DNS on this server. And if we scroll down, we can see that the password of our new domain administrator account is going to be the same password of the local administrator account that we used 
to log on to this server. Now we can choose to export all of these settings to a text file as well if we like by clicking on the export button and then providing a path to where we want to save the file. But for now, we're just going to click next and then the installation will begin. Now this can take a while and it will require that our server be restarted. So we could either check this box here to restart automatically once it's completed the installation or we can do it manually once the wizard completes. So I'll leave this box unchecked for now and we'll pause the video here and we'll return once it's complete. Okay, the installation is now complete. This server is now an Active Directory domain controller with DNS installed. So we'll click finish and then we'll need to restart our server. All right, so now we've created a new domain tree which we'll see grow as we add new domains. We've added a new domain called winstructorlab.com and a domain controller called dco1.winstructorlab.com and we're going to use this structure as the baseline for the other videos in this series where we'll talk more about Active Directory. If you've been around Windows Server operating systems for a while, all of this probably isn't anything new to you. But if on the other hand, you haven't yet played around with domains before, or you've never been in a position to manage domains, then I'd suggest putting a couple of PCs together or grabbing a copy of Microsoft Virtual PC, Microsoft Virtual Server or VMware, or of course the new Hyper-V feature in the 64-bit edition of Windows Server 2008, and then start building your own. We hope you enjoyed